Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Last week, we Scott had brought up a really good question about how do we quiet the mind, particularly whenever we're doing our practice, and, and getting it so we can bring it to focus on the, the task at hand, and instead of running the narrative and also commenting on the task, task at hand. And um, we talked a little bit about that, and I'd like to kind of go a little deeper because it's a, uh, I think it cuts the core of your Kung Fu, of how we actually can go beyond just learning a bunch of rote movements, uh, simple exercises, and take it deeper into something which permits a body, mind, spirit integration, something that allows us to to move outside of our habitual way of moving, our habitual way of being, and into something very uh, special. And it also, whenever we do that, we become more awake and more capable of engaging all the stuff that we're learning. Because, you know, if you hang around the internal arts any length of time, you can accumulate lots and lots of information, lots and lots of little tricks, lots and lots of details. But how do we integrate that? How do we actually bring that into, into practice? And in order to make it work, from my perspective, it requires that we be able to shift into a different state of being and a different state of awareness from our habitual mode. And, you know, just to kind of revisit some of the, the terminology, there's a, a set of functions of the brain called the default mode network, and that it kind of governs the chatter that goes on, the, the, the way that the conscious mind refreshes itself moment by moment whenever it's not task oriented. So this is something that evolution has installed after millions of years of R&D and said, yes, this is what you guys need to survive in the world is this, this chatterbox here that kind of keeps you up to date with the moment and tells your story up to the date, up to the moment, and also kind of has you thinking about the past and trying to solve puzzles and, and trying to resolve things that have already happened, plus also anticipating the future and looking around for danger and things like that. And this is happening at a pre-conscious level, this, this, these, these functions that are going, and little blurbs will pop up where you can become conscious of them. But a lot of the chatter just just happening just below. It's like liminal. It's just below that that level. Anyway, it's this is something that is. It's not your enemy. It's uh, you know, and we don't want to see it in terms of like a a binary thing, yes or no on on that. It's like no, no. This is part of you, and this is part of what it means to be a human. But learning to control your brain so that you can shut it off or park it for a while so that you can move into other things is a key element in any kind of higher level martial arts as well as meditation any kind of spiritual practice learning to be able to go to the gap between thoughts is essential in that So this, you know, having a non-adversarial relationship with the default mode network, say, oh yeah, that's that's what happens whenever I'm not task oriented. So the simple solution to this is give your brain something to do. That is, you are instead of just kind of allowing things to kind of roll along without any interference 
you said, no, no, we're going to steer my thoughts. I'm going to steer my thoughts. I'm going to steer my brain activity into ways that I find are more harmonious or more more uh, advantageous to to me so i one of the key things to do is you know like i say give it something to do so you're looking for activities that promote your kung fu promote your ability to function in the world and so you're being selective about what it is you're what it is you're doing. So you can say, yes, I'll just give it a coloring book and stick it off in the corner and give it some crayons and have it do that for a while. And that's fine. But we can also use that to moment by moment reprogram our nervous system so that we are developing a foundation, a body foundation that supports mind and supports spirit, uh, supports spirit. So it's important to, again, not make this a binary choice. Say so like, oh, well, Rich just says, hey, it's all brain stuff. It's like, no, not at all. I'm saying that there is the physical substantial aspect of what we're doing, which involves the nervous system. Does it talk about, does that, does that explanation take us to where we want to go? Not exactly, but it provides a foundation so that we don't have to reinvent the wheel every time we want to come to present time, every time we want to bring focus our awareness in, in a way that directs our energy in a meaningful, helpful, useful way. So if we can involve ourselves in practices like hundreds of times a day where we are consciously bringing ourselves out of that default mode network and into the gap between thoughts where we just oh we're just able to be without thinking to know without thinking so then we start to change our, our state of being. We start to change our whole nervous system. And uh, so there are lots of little tricks that you can do to make that happen. So that you can start to develop these things. And so much of my focus recently and probably for a long time has been on the, the micro on um, bringing it in so that, yeah. I find that if we just focus on the big stuff, big movements, you know, learning, elaborate complex activities, et cetera, that we can kind of gloss over the necessary transformation that is, that um, will enable us to actually make this stuff work. We can memorize dozens of, martial arts forms, Tai Chi forms or whatever. And, but if we're not actually accessing this, this other way of being, then it's, uh, it's nice, but it, it's, it's not getting to, to what makes those things, what animates those things and makes them tick. So today I would like to focus on something which very, few people I, I find actually think about and and but I, I'm immensely uh, uh, interested in this, in this thing and it's the wrist learning how to to use the wrist so you know we've talked before about how different parts of the body are like big energy gates let's say the quad you know the hip joints you know we get that, that whole area there is a big energy gate. If you're not Sun Kwa, then you're likely um, to be choking off a major chunk of your, of your energy because that 
the, the muscular tension in your buttocks and your lower back, and your lower pelvis, etc., causes that constricts the, the, the chi, the chi expression, the chi flow. So if we get Sun Kwa, that opens up that gate. Similarly, if you know the jade pillow gate at the base of the skull, at the top of the neck, you know, whenever that's opened up, that it's a big energy gate. This activates your Jing Shen, your spirit of vitality, and big stuff happens. If you reaching with your elbows opens up the shoulder joints and that traps a lot of energy. So these are big gates. And uh, you know, I call them kinks in the hose. Unkinking the hose in those places allows us to access chi energy that is much more than we're actually capable of producing with our own physical bodies. We open up to the big chi. And so then we start to running a lot of a lot more through us. We get down to the wrist, though, it's more of a a fine tune. It's like, you know, it's, it's a little, little knob there that allows us to, to regulate what the feeling of the energy is. But it also establishes a efficient way of moving so that we can amplify our effective power by getting us unlocking other joints by being able to be mindful of the wrist and being able to open up that, we can then change the way our muscles express themselves in our movements so that we're not blocking our own, blocking ourselves. We're not getting in the way. So if you just, uh, Just put your sit and put your hand in your lap for a moment. I'm getting a hum. You're getting a hum. Okay, that would be that fan. Okay. So very interesting to 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 watch, you know, or to to feel into your body and and. Just notice a difference here. So first of all, if you're just going to lift your arms, you know, from the shoulders. So just like like this, right? You're you're gonna raise that. So just as you're doing, do, do it very slowly and just pay attention to the what's going on in your arms and how much tension is in the shoulders. And also Pay attention to the feeling in your fingers as you're doing that. And then coming down. Just notice that. Now, don't lift from the shoulders, but instead just bend your wrists as if you're going like this. You're bending, re re reaching upward with the wrists And just notice what happens whenever you do that. Put it down and just bend from the wrist, reaching with the wrist. And just feel into your body and notice the, the, the difference that that has, the effect that has. Notice how your shoulders are, they're not tensing up to do that. And just bending from the wrist. Now go the other way and bend the wrist the other way and lift the fingers and bend that way. And notice the different effect that that has. So bend the other, like this, reach with the wrist up. And then this time reach down with the wrist and notice, notice how that lifting the fingers to, to bend the wrist creates a, a little bit of a kink in the hose there. 
and it causes muscular contraction in your forearms to do that. Whereas if you reach with the wrists, that muscular contraction disappears. There is, there's an opening rather than a closing. And this is something that you can easily demonstrate, you know, if you have someone pushing on you to just feel the difference in your, your effective power if you reach this way as opposed to reach that way. But this time we're going to now re-bend with the wrists and reach forward and up with the wrists as you're doing that. So you're extending upward there and feel your arms being pulled into place by your wrists. So you're not pushing them from the shoulders you're reaching with the fingers re or reaching with the wrists. And then when you're out there, then, then reach out with the fingers. And bend and release. And reach. And reach, release. And then reach. And this time, bring your fingers up and feel, feel the effect that that has on the body. And then down up and down and then oh, reach with the wrist and just notice the way that that creates a coherent feeling throughout the body whenever you do that whenever you reach with the wrist reach down with the elbows and then the wrists this is something I talk about stuff you can do every day, give the, give the brain something to do. Anytime you, you know, you're just, well, just reach with the wrist like that. And just notice that this has a, an effect on your body mind. For me, the effect is one, it calms and integrates everything if I just do that. Very, very different than if I do this. You know, or you know, the, you know, any number of other other ways of doing that. So it's just that it's a way of retraining your movements so that there's a, a a more graceful, but at the same time more powerful way to move. So now take the uh, hand still in your in your lap and just rotate your right hand and just feel that rotation there and rotate back. Rotate your left hand. Rotate that back. Rotate both. And as you come back. Notice that immediately the hands start to tingle, they start to pulse, they start to get active. You're, you're bringing your chi to your fingers just by activating like that. So let's, uh, let's stand up. Oh, actually first, uh, before we do that, any questions at all what we're doing here? We'll explore, the, we'll explore this in a, uh, and like a standing meditation here. All good? Okay, great, let's do it. Okay, uh, stand with your feet hip width apart. And uh, Kim, since you're first time here, I'm just going to introduce uh, the setup that we do for these exercises, which I call the three pillars of body, mind, spirit integration. And each time we 
do a any kind of energy exercise or any kind of hygiene form or whatever. It's really important to put these three pillars in. That means getting them established because they provide the structure and the energetic connections to make it work. So you begin by feeling the balls of your feet along the big toe line, that big knobby thing right behind your big toe there. And feel your weight kind of centered around that. Knees are unlocked. So just rock back into your heels right now and just, just feel the difference into, in the way your, your, your body feels. Feel the, uh, you know, if, you're, if your weight's entirely in your heels, then you're kind of leaning backward. So we want to bring it back so that you're, you're like you're on a diving board. You want to have your, your weight centered over the balls of the feet. Knees are unlocked. Now reach with the crown of the head. That's not the, the top, it's, it's more in the back where your, you know, where the, the posterior fontanelle is. And you wanna reach up with that and tuck in the chin. So you're lengthening your neck as you do this. You're creating some space at the base of your skull. Now, relax your lower back, and allow your tailbone to drop. While at the same time reaching with the crown of your head and still keeping your weight centered over the balls of your feet. We're starting to create what's we refer to as central equilibrium. This is opening the energy connection between the earth, your, you and the earth. You're opening up the energy gates in your feet. You're opening up the energy gate in the, um, your knee one at the top of your head. So that gets the your connection to the yang chi of the, of the heavens. You're also opening the gate at the uh, jade pillow gate at the base of the skull. And this frees up energy that gets trapped in your in a neck that gets stiff or tight. But next thing we want to do is to push away from the earth as if you're pushing your head against the ceiling and then ah, relax and feel yourself sinking into your legs and releasing the hip joints, the quad. And you can kind of turn side to side, just be nice and relaxed, released into that. So instead of, do it again, just push away from the earth and ah, settle down in. You're soon into, those, into your legs. You're feeling the support of your legs, but you're, al you're allowing your body to settle into that support rather than tensing up and, and uh, lifting your body with that. So it's more of a yin support. Round your arms a little bit and reach out with your elbows. So you're feeling that feeling you're feeling your elbows. And as you do that, you can also feel into your shoulder joints and notice you're creating space there. Point your index fingers. Feel the energetic coherence that comes with that. Good. 
So just pause for a moment and just feel into your body and feel the, the chi lighting up. You can feel it easiest in your hands, feel the tingling or pulsing in your hands. You may feel it in your feet, but then you start to feel it throughout the whole system. Now, I want you to just bend your wrists as if you're lifting from the wrists, allowing your fingers just to hang as you do that. So the bend is like this rather than like that, right? You're just bending the wrists and just feel how that affects your hands. Notice that every time you do that, just do it a few times. Each time you bend the wrists like that, you are changing the energy in your hands and in your whole body. You're fine tuning it. And now bend and reach out with the wrists. Start to bring your arms up. And do it very slowly and feel that weight of your arms. Relax your shoulders, relax the muscles in your arms, and you're reaching out. Your fingers are just hanging. And feel the effect that that's having on your hands. And bring your hands down. So we're focusing on the micro here. Because this is what feeds the macro. We can focus a lot on elaborate routines, but if you're missing this part, you're not going to get what you want out of the big routines. Do it again. So reach with the wrists, relax your shoulders, reach down and with your elbows as you do that. So notice that. All the actions happening. I'm going to turn my body sideways so you can see what, what that looks like here. So I establish my position, my three pillars, and reach with my elbows so that my shoulders are unlocked, and reach with the wrists. And I'm deliberately just moving slowly, but also not going very far with it and just noticing that there is a range there that is governed by the wrist, by that movement of the wrist. Bring your arms down. And again, so you're feeling, you want to feel this movement in your feet. You're sinking into, into your into your legs as you do this and you're reaching out. And notice you get to about here and something else wants to kick in. If I, you know, if I keep pushing like this, I'm gonna have to use some muscular contraction. So it's at this point, I'm reaching with the elbows, opening the shoulders and ah, that further extension there. So I'm reaching out with the wrists as I'm doing this. And then I reach with the fingers. And as I do that, I want to open up between my shoulder blades as I do that. So I'm reaching out and feeling that extension. So lately I've been using the term fong, F-A-N-G, to describe that extension. You're extending as if you want to touch something. And then reaching down with the elbows. So, and bending the wrists again. And just feel into that, feel that. And start to come down and uh, reach with the wrists. You're coming down.
And this, at this point, we're moving the wrist in the other direction to create a little chi dam there. So actually, this is actually, we're using it now because we've got the energy moving. So we can allow that to build up and then reach down and open, reaching down with the, with the, the fingers and feeling the, all the joints opening up and feeling the chi moving through that. Okay, so let's do it a few times. As a little qigong exercise. Nice and slow. So feel your three pillars, feel that push away from the earth uh, and sink. Ah, boom. Feel your root, feel that energetic connection with the earth. Reach for the crown of your head. Bend the wrists. You're not moving the shoulders at all. And just indulge yourself in that, in that for the moment, just that feeling that gets produced. Because it's a subtle feeling, but it can also be very powerful. And it also sets up the, uh, the energy going. Notice also when you do that, when you bend that, you reach with the wrist like that, notice how it changes your state of awareness. We talked before about getting out of the gap between thoughts and into, uh, get, I'm sorry, getting out of the default mode network and into the gap between thoughts. Right here, just notice that that's what's happening. We've given the brain something else to do. And in doing, we don't, we're not thinking about it, we're just doing it, we're feeling it, we're feeling the effects of it. Reach with the wrists, reach with the elbows, you're reaching out, feel that extension, that fong, Bring your hands up to about chest high. Reach with the fingers. Feel the, reach with the elbows and feel your, ba your back opening up between your scapula. Reach with the elbows down. They're gonna leave the coming down. Feel your wrists following that, reaching down with the wrists. Feel, feel that little chi dam. Your hands start to buzz and then ah, reach down with the fingers, reach down with the elbows. Reach up with the crown of your head. And the wrists. Reach. There's the wrists. Fingers are relaxed. Reach with the fingers. the elbows, open, fong, reach down with the elbows, down with the wrists. Feel the chi dam and reach, point and reach. This time, just using your right hand to and the wrists to initiate. Reaching with the wrist. 
Shoulders relaxed, elbow reaching out and rotate the forearm, palm up. Very relaxed, very graceful. The grace of this movement is uh, belies its, its effective power. It actually is much stronger than if I were doing it in a very stiff way. Rotate the hand, reach down with the elbow, the wrist. And feel the, your right arm now and compare it to your left arm and notice the difference in the chi flow there. Your right arm may feel a little longer. Mine does. Feels longer than my left arm. So let's figure out how to correct that. We're going to reach with the left wrist. Shoulders relaxed, elbow relaxed, reaching, rotate, left hand, extend, open. Calm down. Reach down with your elbow, down with the wrist. That's better, got a matching set now. Right hand. Feel the ball of your right foot, set your right knee spiral down to the left. So you're kind of releasing down as you're turning and reach with the wrist. The wrist is leading the arm, rotate the palm. Reaching, rotate. Reach down with the wrist, down with the elbow. Feel the ball, the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the right and reach with the wrist. Rotate. Turn. Reach down with your elbow, down with the wrist. Your arms float down. We're going to bring them together now. So reaching with the right wrist. So you're spiraling down, turning, and reaching with the wrist. As that comes down, bring the left hand and you're turning to the right and reaching, reaching with the wrist and turning. Bring right wrist, reach. Left wrist. Bring both hands down. Rotate your arms, your forearms, and your palms out. Feel into your hands, feel into the way that that affects your whole system. Rotate back. See how much tension you can let go make that happen, rotate again. Rotate back. If we begin to move leading with the wrist, it's a different kind of movement than if I lead with my shoulder. If I use my shoulder, start to move by pulling my shoulder, 
it's a very different kind of energy than if I ah, lead with the wrist. So step in, take a deep breath. Ah, and disappear the chi, pushing down. You can see, please. Hmm. So we can use this in any movement, and I find it particularly effective in push hands, because if I'm, I'm going to get to go to full screen here for a moment. Get, uh, okay, thank you. So I'm finding that if I'm doing push hands, if I'm leading with my wrist, then I'm not kicking the hose in my shoulder, I'm not creating a stiffness in my arm, which then can be used as a lever to, to move me. Whereas if I'm doing this, there is an energetic connection throughout the whole system that is soft and flexible, yet extremely powerful, more powerful than my stiff arm would be with uh, an arm that's just stiff by muscular contraction. So getting that, that so that your primary initiation there of any arm movement comes from a wrist awareness. It sounds weird to, to, to say that. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing these words that are coming out of my mouth and they're sounding a little weird, but they, uh, there is this a wrist awareness that that starts the whole process in motion, and it's, and you can think of it in, term, in me, very mechanical terms. In that, if I just bend the wrist, that's a, the simplest little lever that I'm using that that can then activate the elbow, can then activate the shoulder, and then then activate the whole system. And so there is a I can tie it in together that way. So, but if I start with the big ones first, then I have this big clunky, stiff, uh, long lever that is um, dependent on a very weak fulcrum, particularly if I'm talking about the, the, the shoulders. So this way it, it doesn't connect the, the arm up as a lever, it connects it up as this sinewy, Um, I used to call them the, the twin pythons of love because they, they had this, uh, <laughs> they, this very sinewy kind of uh, sensual sensing kind of uh, uh, effect and, and they had a, had a mind of their own. So uh, I uh, uh, had a lot of fun with that, but the, uh, uh, it's much better than thinking in this little blocky uh, uh, pegs that come out from my shoulders. So anyway, any uh, questions or thoughts on this? <laughs> Scott. So um, the one thing that I find sometimes when you, you know, okay, so now for the next couple of days, you know, I'll be driving and I'll be lifting my wrist all the time. So go on. Sorry. <clears throat> so for the next couple of days, I'll be driving around, you know, and I'll be lifting my wrist all the time. And then after a while, my brain will say, oh, I know this game. And then it's kind of back to the same thing again. Yes. Yes. So the answer is just keep switching the game. Is that the answer? Uh, 
<laughs> kind of, kind of. It just you keep switching the game and keep finding new ways to amuse yourself with it. Um, it helps to have feedback because uh, you're only going to play a game as long as it's fun. You know, it's it's one of those things that you're going to do, and and as long as you feel like it's getting you somewhere. So, uh, you know, if you grab a partner and you have the partner hold on you, grab you, you know, like tight like that, and then you try, you know, moving with any other part of your body, you know, this kind of gets in more of a push hands context, but then you, you know, then you say, oh, just you're reaching with the wrist and so suddenly it becomes very powerful. Maria, you want to give me a hand with this? We'll do a, do a little demo of this. You can oh, you can see oh. this. Um, you can see how this 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 works. Why don't you go back to yeah? There you go. So I grab Maria's wrist like that, and she's going to try to push me or do something other than just by moving with her wrist. And she's going to it it uh, the the it, there's not enough muscle power there to make something happen. But if she just bends her wrists like that and, and reaches with that, it immediately uproots me. It's, uh, it's, it's uncanny because what's happened then is when you, when you do that, you're bending like that. So now you're pushing from the shoulder. That doesn't work. You have to reach, reach with the wrist. So, so now this, this, there is a very small motion here which has a disproportionate effect on me because I, I I know that if she's starting from her shoulder that is not going she doesn't has no chance of pushing me but if she but if she bends and reaches with the wrist then suddenly I'm I'm uprooted because now it's connected throughout the whole system so this is just a, a simple kind of feedback that you can get and then uh, but you can play all kinds of games with it if, if similarly, if, if she tries to turn her wrist like that, right, and I'm holding it, it's because it, she's turning it from the shoulder, it doesn't work. But if she initiates from the wrist, then she has this tremendous amount of torque that comes from, from that energetic connection that she can't get out of her simple muscular contraction. So I mean, these are just two very simple ways of getting feedback from the uh, from that, thank you. Yeah. So, any chance we get to to confirm it physically, so you're feeling it, then your body says, "Oh yeah, that that's useful." And then, so you're driving around in your truck, and you know. What, what does it take to just do that, right? It just, you know, what does it take to just bend your wrist? And if you, each time you do it, you get a little hit of, of good juju whenever, whenever that, that happens, then you're, there's a, um, your mind starts to say, oh, I'm gonna keep doing that. You know, cause, cause I got something good out of it. Nick, you had something. Yeah, no, it's just an observation, I think. Thinking of it in, in a, as similar to pumping a swing, right? When you sit in a swing and you move your feet and, and you pump, and each time you pump, you get a little bit more altitude out of it. The same thing happens with this. It's kind of, at least for me, I feel as though it, it just builds on itself. And, and so the building is what keeps it from becoming the same old thing and and your mind going away as if you you focus on feeling that building beautiful uh just one thing i do want to point out is like all of us are programmed to initiate from the shoulders it just it's the way you know, the way we're built it's wrong but it it's still the way we're we're designed it's and by wrong, I mean it's inefficient and ineffective. And this is a way of reprogramming so that you can no longer 
are automatically going to the shoulders as your default setting. So it's just, it's one of those kind of things you do. And, and if you can start to prioritize that, then you start to, it creeps into other things so that your, your, your shoulders, like one day you notice and like, oh, I'm not tensing my shoulders just to do simple actions. Valerie, you had something. Yes, um, two things. <clears throat> well, it's actually one thing. <clears throat> um, instead of just lifting from the wrist, hither and non, to do it with intentionality, you know, it's like I am going to lift from my wrist. It's like I've been doing this thing of, you know, doing one thing with my right hand, but intentionally doing it with my right hand. And then the next time I do it with my left hand, but I'm thinking I'm intentionally using my left hand. So to me, it's, I've been doing this now for several months and every time it, I put my intention in it and it's a game and it's, I, I'm in it every time I do that because I set my intention. And I imagine yeah, I am. <laughs> the other thing that I found when we were doing this, and you you brought it up several times, because I'm not real great at just, you know, letting those, uh, keeping the elbows out. And, you know, so I constantly have to go back to that. But I'm fine. I found that when I was lifting for the wrist, I had to make sure that my elbows were involved as well or it didn't get to my wrist right yeah. to begin with so it's like yeah you can lift from the wrist but it it's not as effective if you don't have the the shoulders open that's for me a, that's what i expect yeah. that's why they're part of the three pillars is that they got to be there and and if they slip out then you got to put them back right beautiful beautiful cool uh peter you had something uh, well, you know, um, women seem to do this naturally, this posture with their wrists and their hands. Is that because they're wiser than we are? I, I, I'll have to ask the women here. Do you, do you naturally do that, Lynn? <laughs> Apparently, I don't qualify as a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, uh, <laughs> but it's something that, uh, you know, what Valerie was saying is it's got to be connected. It's not just this. It's got, oh, there's oh, a oh. connection to the whole system. In other words, the tensegrity of the whole system has to be right. activated in order to make it work. If you're just, yeah, you're, so you're just bending your wrist, then you, get, you just got a bent wrist. Okay. But the, it's that uh, you're reaching with it. So it's not just bending it, is reaching. And that's a, it's a, it's a different animal. And that connects the whole, the whole system. Scott. Uh, it just occurred to me that um, you, you kind of, I think you kind of see like monkeys and apes doing that, right? When, they, when they're doing something, they're not reaching fingers first usually, right? They're usually reaching wrists first, if you ever just came to me. Mm. Maria says yes. <laughs> Good. Uh, anybody else? Well, I hope that was helpful. Uh, these are simple things that we can do to give the brain something to do. Get it out of get it out of the default mode network and give it something useful to do. To reprogramming to reprogram the nervous system and the way we move so that we can actually build on that. We don't, so whatever length of time we're actually spending practicing our Kung Fu, we extend it, we expand it throughout the day. So it's not just in that hour or 15 minutes or whatever we spend doing our Tai Chi form or whatever. It's no, no, it's all day that we're actually consciously, as Valerie was saying, with intentionality, we're activating these, these different things. And every time we do that, it's an opportunity to move out of that default mode network and into a whole brain state, which then opens up 
the mind to expansive states, which opens up spirit. But it they the three of those work together. Lynn. Well, I just found that, I mean, not only does it, you know, give the mind some place to be, but it gives a heck of a energy juice jolt as well. I mean, I just kept finding the the energy just moving through each time we did it a little bit more, a little bit more, you know, and that that was quite the little reward. Yeah. You know. Beautiful. That's kind of like what Nick was saying about the swing there. It's like, you know, you're yeah, you, know, you keep you're, you're pumping, 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 you're building up your capacity and your tolerance for more and more energy. And then, oh, what am I going to do with that? Well, I need some new tricks so that I can I can use my energy in fun ways, ways that, you know, for good, not evil. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, great. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye